Tonight, heating costs are heating up as we approach winter. And concerns about the impact on low-income residents of a new user pay model in Regina for waste pickup. Plus, nearly half a billion dollars. That's the cost estimate for major civic projects planned for downtown Regina. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It's Friday, October 21st. CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Hi, and thank you for joining us. Canadians weathered a shock last winter when it came to the cost of heating their home. Those keeping an eye on the industry say anyone hoping for relief this winter will likely be disappointed. Anis Hadari brings us this story. Suzanne Kedley is replacing anything in her Ottawa home that uses natural gas. Any energy I use in my house from now on, I can have a little less guilt. She's replacing her furnace because she's worried about climate change. So this is my new heat pump. She's well aware of how expensive it was to keep that old furnace burning. At the same time that I'm going to be decreasing my carbon footprint, I'm also going to be avoiding the higher gas prices. That particular utility bill is going away at the right time. While natural gas prices have dropped from their summer peak, they're still higher than Canadians are used to, and they'll keep going up. The prices we're at right now, I mean, they could relatively be low compared to what we might see in the next three, four months. Russia's war on Ukraine drove up the cost of natural gas in a big way. And winter means demand will go up, but supply probably won't because Canada is selling it elsewhere. Now we have growing amount of exports going off uh, to Europe and other places, which is a pull on our gas, which is going to keep you know, the market tighter and, and that translates into higher prices. When we talk about doors, we want to look at um, weather stripping. Energy auditors have tips to avoid those higher prices, say by checking the weather stripping on your door. If they're stiff and they're torn and they're falling apart, it's time to replace it. And it's quite easy to replace. It's a lot of peel and stick that you can get from the hardware stores and it's fairly inexpensive. Whether you're just turning down the thermostat to save or spending big money on a heat pump, energy watchers say Canadians should get used to higher heating prices. Anis Haidari, CBC News, Calgary. Weather specialist Ethan Williams joins me now. So we were just talking about heating costs, and I'm hearing we'll have to jack up the temperatures indoors soon. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, Natasha, unfortunately, and may need to pull out the boots and the, the parkas as well as we are getting some winter weather, a Colorado low on the way. We do know a few things right now. This is mostly going to be a system that's falling as rain, at least kind of the first half of it. We will get some snow, though, but it will likely be quite wet and heavy, and it will be pretty easily melting as well. Might stick around for a day or two afterward, but temperatures should be warming up a bit after it falls. The system is moving in tomorrow morning, should be done for most of us as we move through Monday morning, but there is is still not a lot we know in terms of accumulation just because we don't know when the rain is going to change over to snow temperatures uh, just where the system is going to hit exactly but we do know that there is a special weather statement in place through much of southern and eastern Saskatchewan and uh, there will be major impacts along with this Natasha including possibly some treacherous uh, conditions on the road so people should prepare for that and maybe some power outages so it'd be good to have an emergency kit as well I'll have a full update coming up a little bit later. Thanks for that, Ethan. You bet. Public consultations have wrapped up for major development projects in Regina. A city committee is planning five big builds that could shape downtown for decades to come. They include a new aquatic facility, a replacement for the Brandt Centre, a baseball stadium, an outdoor field, and the modernization of the Central Library. We now also have a good idea of how much these projects will cost, $490 million in total. We got to that number based on information presented to the public this week, but that's just an initial estimate. One of the committee's co-chairs told media that inflation could play a big role in the cost. The cost of inflation right now, I think on these projects, needs to be recognized as a significant risk. That may change in the next year, but right now we're seeing inflation on, you know, frankly, the cost of borrowing and the cost of construction is something we haven't seen in 25 years in Canada. 
With public consultations over, the committee must now prepare a report for City Council. That report will recommend what projects the city should go ahead with and in what order. It's due by the end of the year. Meanwhile, Regina's executive committee voted unanimously this week in favor of charging for garbage, recycling, and the new yard waste pickup program on utility bills rather than property taxes. This plan takes into account a lower rate for low-income households where a senior or a person with a disability resides. But anti-poverty activists say that isn't enough. They want rebates for other low-income Regina residents. One city councillor says she's open to discussing other options. I personally don't have the answer for what might be an amendment that can um, expand out like a logical amendment to expand the rebate to other low income residents that doesn't cause challenges. I don't have that answer, but I'm certainly open to hearing from someone who does. This is happening at a time of extremely high inflation, a time when utility costs have been going up. Uh, it's post uh, implementation of the Saskatchewan Income Support Program, which has meant that for people on, on that program, their utilities are wrapped into their shelter allowance. What we're seeing is, is uh, a real increase in the number of people who are dealing with uh, arrears, uh, cutoffs, etc. If council approves the new fee structure next week, it will come into effect in 2024. The Saskatchewan NDP has started its annual convention in Saskatoon. The three-day event is the first for Carla Beck as party leader. Adam Hunter has the details. TCU Place in Saskatoon will have a decidedly orange tint this weekend. For the first time in three years, the NDP is holding its convention in person. And a lot has changed for the party in just one year. Last October, former leader Ryan Miley received 72% support in his leadership review vote. Four months later, he announced he would be resigning as leader. In June, Carla Beck won party leadership. She says she's ready to unite the NDP. We've also heard this summer, um, you know, not only within the party, but right across the province, people are tired of division. People are tired of pointing fingers. They want leaders to get to the table, to be the grown-ups in the room, and to, to build those solutions that I think are out there. And that's, that's another theme that I, I want to see us build on. Beck will address the convention tomorrow before facing her own leadership review vote. It's exciting. Uh, not only my first convention as leader, but the first time we've been all together for three years and you, know, you see it here already. People are so excited to, to come together again, uh, to build on the momentum that we have coming out of the big by-election win in Miwasan and adding a new member to our team. The party will have three other leaders address the convention this weekend. The keynote will be delivered in person by Manitoba NDP leader Wab Canoe. Alberta NDP leader Rachel Notley has her own party convention and will speak over video as will federal NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. We're glad that he's able to send a message and in fact he is uh, in that portion of our agenda where we're celebrating our um, accomplishment in bringing Medicare to Saskatchewan and he's bringing his greetings in that context. So that's really exciting for us as a party. I can say that uh, it is always wonderful when leaders are able to come in person but in this day and age videos are a, a second best. The party has several resolutions on the agenda, including making NDP offices and events more accessible to people with disabilities, and a pledge that if the NDP were to form government, it would reduce the number of MLAs from 61 down to 57. Adam Hunter, CBC News, Regina. The federal government's latest restrictions on handguns are now in effect. Today, our national freeze on handguns is coming into force. From today forward, it is no longer legal to buy, sell, or transfer a handgun in Canada. Some people can still own and use their registered handguns under the new rules. They can also sell or transfer handguns to what the government defines as exempted individuals or businesses. That would include the movie industry and museums. Regina police are trying to identify a man they found dead in Wascana Lake yesterday afternoon. 
The body was discovered just after 3 p.m. Police believe the man was between 60 and 70 years old. They say he's about 5 foot 3. He was wearing a gray sweater, a black fleece, a black North Face jacket and Asics running shoes. Police in the corner are trying to determine how he died. Anyone with more information is asked to contact police or Crime Stoppers. The Ministry of Health says six cases of monkeypox have been identified in Saskatchewan. Previously, the Public Health Agency of Canada had only reported three cases. The province wouldn't say when those three additional cases were detected, but it confirmed that, as of right now, there are no active contact investigations. The health authority is also warning people about a monkeypox phone scam. A call comes in with a recorded message telling the person who answered they are a close contact of someone with the virus. People are then asked to press a number for more information. The health authority says if you get a call, you should simply hang up. Depending on what happens in tonight's Hamilton-Ottawa game, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders could very well be in a do-or-die situation when they face the Calgary Stampeders. And for their most important challenge of the year, they are turning the ball over to a quarterback with very little CFL experience. Veteran quarterback Cody Fajardo is out. Instead, 25-year-old Mason Fine is starting tomorrow night. Fine has been Fajardo's backup all season, throwing 42 passes and two touchdowns in relief duty. The head coach says it will be a steep learning for Fine and knows what it's often like for QBs making their CFL starting debuts. Usually pretty rough, to be quite honest, but we, uh, we don't feel like Mason is a rookie in a lot of ways, Glenn. I mean, he's been with us for two years now and he's played quite a bit in the preseason he, he, and he's taken a lot of reps in practice. So it's going to be a learning curve for sure. Um, but he's played a lot of football in his life, and we feel like he's, he's going to go out and do a good job. But traditionally, you're right. First starts, second starts for, for quarterbacks have not gone well, but you got to start at some point. You know, you study the game plan and film, and you have kind of what they're trying to do and their identity. Now, you know, they could do some things against just being a younger quarterback. Maybe they could pressure me up. Maybe they could change some things up. So we're going to – I think Moss, uh, Coach Moss is going to do a great job. At, he's done a great job at creating a great game plan uh, for me and kind of my attributes. And once you get into the flow of things, figure it out, then, you know, he'll make the right plays. And, you know, we got a lot of plays in the playbook. And I just got to ex execute. Fajardo has been listed as the backup for tomorrow night's game. He is expected to see some action. Kickoff is at 5 o'clock. Remember that gloomy forecast from earlier? People are already hunkering down for it. They're digging out warmer jackets and toques from their closet and trying to take in the last fall leaves on the trees. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Residents at a senior's home in Montreal got a special delivery this week. It's a humanoid robot. Grace is meant to keep seniors company and reduce social isolation. Chloe Rinaldi shows us how it works. Hello, my name is Grace. Grace the humanoid robot made her grand entrance at the senior residence Pearl and Teo. She had a large audience welcome her. We as caregivers are busy. Our residents are not busy all day long, you know. So therefore, the robot will be able to fit in to where we cannot. While they offer a number of activities here, Montooth says they also have to deal with sick patients and emergencies. So they hope Grace can fill in. The entire industry is so understaffed, you know. So what do we do? We, we try to focus on the essentials, not necessarily sitting around and laughing and joking. The goal of the humanoid robot is to keep seniors company and break social isolation. It's part of a study led by the Jewish General Hospital. I love spending time with seniors because they're so friendly and hospitable. The humanoid robot listens when people speak then generates a response. We are hoping that the interactions with Grace could give them a space to vent, to be actively listened to. Dr. Paula Levine says the robot isn't there to replace people, but with the shortage of staff, it can fill an important gap. Now, the fact that she's able to develop language and in social interactions does not mean that uh, this, this robot 
would have you know emotions she's able to see them interpret them and be empathic but she doesn't have her own emotions three seniors were chosen for the study they will interact with grace over eight weeks for 30 minute sessions what's your favorite movie and who who's your favorite actor and actress i haven't seen a lot of movies yet but i do love me some blade runner Frances Greenberg is one of the participants. I think she's lovely, intelligent, well-dressed. <laughs> Researchers hope the project will be successful, so it can be a model for other long-term care facilities in the future. Chloe Rinaldi, CBC News, Montreal. This weather update is brought to you by Capital GMC Buick Cadillac. 22 model clear out is on now. Weather specialist Ethan Williams is back now with a full look at our forecast. Things are not bad out now, but that's about to change. Yeah, about to change big time, Natasha. And in fact, we are noticing some precipitation on radar right now. We've had showers across the southern portion of the province this afternoon. Those are beginning to move out. Some showers now building in in to southwestern Saskatchewan, and that is in anticipation of the very messy weather that we are going to expect this weekend. Showers possible along the south of the province tonight. This is how we think this is all going to play out. We get to tomorrow at around the noon hour or so, and showers are beginning to build into southwestern Saskatchewan. Maybe some sleet in there as well, and then the showers move eastward through the day tomorrow. By the time we get to the supper hour tomorrow, it looks like much of southern Saskatchewan seeing that rain. Heaviest amounts really along kind of the uh, southern border of the province. And then as we head through Sunday overnight, it looks like temperatures are going to get a little bit cool, cooler air rushing into this system, and things are going to start to change over uh, to sleet and a little bit of snow. And then by tomorrow, or by Sunday rather, by the noon hour, it looks like most of this system is uh, in the form of snow. And really, from a line from Assiniboine Gravelberg up to Regina up toward uh, Yorkton and Hudson Bay is where I think the heaviest of the snow is going to be. Showers continuing in the southeast portion of the province and then by the time we get to the end of day Sunday into very early Monday morning it's pretty much all snow. It's beginning to taper off and then it moves out of the province as we head through uh, the rest of the day. Now accumulation as I mentioned kind of a little bit difficult to pinpoint with this. I think these are uh, these amounts are a little bit on the high side of things, especially in Regina. I think maybe generally between 10 and 20 millimeters, maybe locally 25 millimeters. For the central part of the province, this is probably likely where you're going to be, maybe in the two to four millimeter range. And in terms of snowfall, as I mentioned, really in kind of a corridor from Estevan up toward Moose Jaw, Regina, and then northward toward Hudson, and, uh, or Hudson Bay and Yorkton. Again, I think these amounts are maybe a little bit heavy, Closer to 10 centimeters, I think, is where we'll top out at. Maybe 15 centimeters, but again, a lot of the snow going to be very wet and a lot of it going to melt on contact, especially as, uh, as it falls a little earlier in the system. Winds tomorrow in anticipation of this, actually not all that bad. It's Sunday we'll have to watch for when even as gusts get over 30 kilometers an hour combined with that snow, we could get uh, some treacherous conditions on highways. And even into Monday morning as we continue to see snow in southeastern Saskatchewan, keep in mind those gusts are close to 60 kilometers kilometers an hour. So if you're heading to work or you have to head on the highway early Monday, best to keep that in mind. Visibilities, uh, speaking of, will begin to drop likely tomorrow night in southwestern Saskatchewan and then heading into Sunday morning. It looks like we could be at, you know, less than a kilometer in the Assiniboia area. That'll only get worse and progress eastward heading through the day on Sunday. Now, uh, Regina tomorrow actually going to be uh, not a bad day temperature wise for the rider game. Some showers possible. So I bring a rain jacket and then after we have the system on Sunday. We are going to clear up and eventually warm up. Saskatoon again, not as greatly impacted by this system. Maybe some flurries, maybe a couple centimeters of snow. Still windy, but there is hope, Natasha, because it looks like we clear out and warm up afterward. Ah, hope is what I needed to see. That's Thank right. you. <laughs> you bet. Maddie the Calico Kitty cuddles with her owner in northern Alberta. The cat was on the lam for seven years. Her owners figured she had been killed, but another cat lover noticed Maddie hanging around and posted some photos online, trying to track down her owner. Eventually, they confirmed her identity thanks to a tattoo. Turns out Maddie made it 175 kilometers away to Edmonton. Quite a journey, and now quite the homecoming. We'll be back after the break.
This was day one of the race to become Britain's next prime minister. The Conservative Party is transitioning from Liz Truss's brief leadership, and she could be succeeded by the man she replaced. Chris Brown reports from London. Faster than expected, the trappings of yet another Conservative leadership race are back outside Britain's Parliament. He's definitely got the momentum. Including the bookies and their chalkboards. Around about 30% of the money on the market has been for the former PM. Hasta la vista, baby. Thank you. Boris Johnson's sign-off in July was notably more of a see you later than a farewell forever. On a Caribbean holiday, he's not confirmed he wants his old job back, but nonetheless got a big endorsement from Britain's Defence Secretary. At the moment, I would lean towards Boris Johnson. Morning, Mr Sunak. Rishi Sunak, a former Chancellor who came in second to Liz Truss, is probably in, say supporters, while Penny Mordaunt, a Truss cabinet minister, says she's definitely in. But it's Johnson with the buzz and the baggage. But them's the breaks. He was turf for a myriad of ethical lapses, scandals and truth fudging. But it now appears he has a chance at redemption. Candidates only have until 2 o'clock on Monday to get 100 Tory MPs to back them. If only one does, then they automatically become the next Prime Minister. But if there's two, all Conservative members will cast online ballots with the result by Friday. You know, it's high risk going back to Boris Johnson, but the guy wins elections. That Political scientist John Tong's predictions have hit the mark in the past. As long as he can get over that 100 barrier, he really ought, ought to win. If he goes to a member's ballot, he wins because he's still the darling of the party. Amid Britain's political chaos, turning to Johnson for stability struck some Londoners as ill-advised. We're actually going to allow a potential crook back into the highest office in this country. What does it say about the, our nation? Absolutely appalling. In what universe would he be a suitable prime minister? We've just thrown him out. The opposition Labour Party is calling for a general election, but one's not due to take place until at least 2024. If there was a vote, polls suggest the chaos would leave the Conservatives decimated. Chris Brown, CBC News, London. Ukraine's president is warning about what he calls Russia's next terrorist attack. Vladimir Zelensky says Russian troops have planted explosives inside a massive hydroelectric dam in southern Ukraine. Destroying the dam would flood dozens of communities, including the strategically important city of Herzan. Zelensky did not provide any proof of this. Ukraine plans to push back Russian forces from the Herzan region. Russian installed officials have been evacuating people from the area. Ethan joins us for another look at this weekend's weather. Any chance that forecast has changed since the start of the show? I wish I had that kind of power, Natasha, but unfortunately it's looking like it's still going to be pretty ugly. But we'll start the morning not too badly in Regina. Mostly cloudy conditions, very light winds at the freezing mark. And getting to the noon hour, those uh, clouds are going to be sticking around. Winds picking up a little bit. We'll warm up pretty quickly to around 9 on the way to a daytime high of 11. Showers likely for the rider game a little bit later. Saskatoon a little sunnier, minus 2 at 8 a.m. And then by the noon hour, we are looking for 7 degrees with a mix of sun and clouds. Clouds winds around 20 kilometers an hour. Now, this storm should be over by the time we get to the uh, celebration of Diwali on Monday. And if you are celebrating in Saskatoon, sun and cloud with four degrees. And uh, if you are in Regina, though, uh, Natasha, it looks like it'll be a little bit cloudier and cooler for that celebration. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. That's it for us tonight. For news anytime, head to cbc.ca slash sask. You can also subscribe to the CBC Saskatchewan YouTube channel. Glenn Reid will be back with more at 11.